in Luke 10, 19, Jesus says this to his disciples. He says, behold, I give you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. That's a really incredible scripture. First, Jesus is admitting that the enemy has powers. And he's saying to us, his disciples, he's giving us the authority to trample on all the enemy's powers. That's really exciting. In other words, we should not be scared of the enemy. The enemy should be scared of us. God has given us the authority over the enemy's powers. To exercise that authority, however, we have to be fully submitted to God. One of the ways of understanding this is looking at the way parliament works. You see, the laws are passed in parliament, but the fact that the laws are passed in parliament does not mean those laws are obeyed everywhere. You see, Jesus won the victory on the cross over 2,000 years ago. He defeated Satan and Satan is already defeated. And Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And then he says to us, his disciples, therefore go. In other words, he's telling us to go in the same authority that he now has, having defeated Satan. However, the fact that Satan was defeated on the cross does not mean the victory of the cross is manifested everywhere. So what happens is just like with the illustration of parliament, the fact that the laws are passed does not mean the laws are obeyed everywhere. Now we have law enforcers and the job of the law enforcer is to enforce the law that has already been passed in parliament. In the same way, spiritually, we're called to be enforcers of the victory of the cross. The fact that that victory has been won does not mean that the enemy does not rebel against that victory. You see, this is an amazing picture of what intercession is because there's many parts of our society where darkness is ruling and reigning and we see all kinds of bondage and all kinds of things going on that it's clearly the work of the enemy. However, we already have the victory because Jesus told us to go in his authority. What we now need to do is be the enforcers of the victory of the cross. We have to enforce that victory in every area of society. See, if we don't do that, darkness is going to keep reigning until someone rises up and says, not on my watch. This cannot carry on any longer in my family, in my life. I refuse to accept this anymore. And we begin to speak the word of God and exercise the authority has given us only then will we begin to see change around us in James 4 7 the Bible also says this it says submit yourself to the Lord resist the enemy resist the devil and he will flee from you now watch this it doesn't say submit yourself to the Lord and pray to God to resist the enemy on your behalf who does the resisting it is me, it is you, it is us. Many times in prayer, we're asking God to do things that he's already asked us to do. So many times we're asking God to come and take away the enemy. We're asking God to come and take away the darkness. And he's saying, submit yourself to me and resist the darkness. Submit yourself to me and resist the devil. We are the ones that do the resisting. However, in order to resist the enemy, we have to be submitted to his authority because you cannot have authority over an enemy you're sleeping with. The moment we're not in total submission to God, we're not able to resist the enemy effectively. To the degree to which we are submitted to God, that's the degree to which the enemy is afraid of us. It's important to understand that we are in a spiritual battle and prayer is warfare. A casual approach to prayer produces casualties. It's time for us to take prayer serious because the enemy is out to get us with all kinds of darkness, distractions, sins, oppressions, and pretty much things that are out to paralyze our authority in defeating him. You know, light is the opposite of darkness and black is the opposite of white, but really God has no opposites. Many times we tend to think of God as though he's the opposite of the enemy, he's the opposite of Satan, and that's really not the case. Satan is a created being and God is not. If there was an opposite for Satan, it would probably be another higher ranking angel somewhere. Satan cannot oppose God. In fact, he tried to oppose God and he was kicked out of heaven. 
So what he now does is he tries to oppose God by opposing us who are made in God's image because he knows that we are the apple of God's eye. So he tries to get to God by getting to us. That's exactly why Jesus came as us, a man, to defeat the enemy, to show us how to defeat him. John Wesley once said, God does nothing on earth except in response to believing prayer. Now it's not that God is not able to do whatever he wants to do. It's that God has set certain laws in motion, the way the universe runs and the way things work. And he is almost subject to his own laws. For example, when God created man, he says, let them have dominion over the earth. And by God saying that, that became law. So man, human beings, we are responsible for this planet. From God's perspective, he's given us the authority to rule and to reign and to steward this planet. Now, obviously, Adam and Eve failed in that and the enemy came and sin came into the world and they gave that to the enemy. Now, Jesus came to defeat the enemy, to take that authority back and give it to us. So what happens is for God to interfere in the fears of man, he finds a man on the earth that agrees with him because he's delegated authority to us to steward this planet. God does not just interfere with the fears of man without finding a man on the earth that is in agreement with what he wants to do. And this is an amazing picture of prayer. We need to understand the authority and the power invested in us as believers. The least member of the body of Christ has authority over all the powers of the enemy. See, it is time for us to stop being scared. It is time for us to stop being quiet and silent. It is time for us to begin to speak, to begin to pray, to begin to take authority over darkness in all its manifestations around us. Now remember, we will not be able to do that until we're first submitted to God's authority. Jesus asked us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He asked us to pray that because it's possible. What would it look like for the kingdom of God to invade our society? What would it look like for the kingdom of God and the will of God to be done in our families, in our communities? I tell you what, it's not going to happen until we begin to take authority and we begin to pray like he asked us to pray.